All right, let's talk about fail-safe designing. Fail-safe is pretty cool. So essentially what the concept is, is that you design it to fail in a manner that is not going to like really harm anybody or cause like a big failure in the whole system and, and you know, and, and cause a really big cat catastrophe in some kind of system where, you know, gears are going to fly everywhere and, and it's going to blow everything up. So fail-safe designing might even be like if you were designing some kind of transmission and you knew that, you know what, this gear is probably going to be the one that goes first because everything's eventually going to fail. So maybe you put a cowling around the gear so that when it does go, it's going to like, you know, uh, it's going to not blow out. Actually, snowmobiles have that. Um, snowmobiles, the clutches and stuff and the belts on the snowmobiles, um, they'll fail. And that belt, when it goes, it, it'll go flying. Well, there's a cowling around the belt. So that's fail safe. So here we go. Let's just get into um, what I want to talk to you guys about specifically for the pneumatics for um the lab. So let's jump into uh, this cool little PowerPoint that I have, and we'll go over a fail safe, and we'll talk about locking that kind of. So welcome to fail safe design. Uh, and what's going on? So essentially, all systems, mechanisms, whatever machines, the components that go in there, they're going to fail in some way. So you have to design for the inevitable breakdown of those things, especially when they're going to either harm individuals or do systemic damage to a system so um you know if one thing breaks it's going to somehow kind of cascade and break a bunch of other things so there are many methods to safety to to lots of things about safety there's there's safety for um essentially you can do maintenance safety you can replace parts and you can inspect things and and you can you know have operator feedback like gauges and stuff essentially essentially um a, a gas tank is a safety thing. So there's a gas tank, sorry, a gas tank gauge is, you know, it's about safety. It's so that you don't run out of gas. It lets you know there's user feedback. There are several other kinds of safety methodologies, but I don't want to get into that. I want to focus on fail safe designing. So this is a pretty cool example. What's going on is this is this is my old 77 Lincoln. Um, and in here is a door. This door has an actuator on it to pull it closed. So when you turn the headlights off, an actuator, a pneumatic actuator, pulls the door closed against a spring. So now if for some reason the air system died and, and wasn't able to pull this thing closed, it would open. So or if the, if the actuator failed or if the valve that controlled it failed, it's pretty cool, actually, because when I pull the like I have a headlight switch where you pull it out when i pull it out there's actually a valve in the switch and i can hear hear it go and allowing air to um to go in and control the actuator and actually what it does actually it, it vents the air in the actuator and it allows the door just to open up because there's a spring so if the system fails this door will open and you know headlights they're really a big part of safety i need my headlights to drive at night so that's pretty cool okay so another example here automatic locks so sometimes an automatic lock if it fails will lock and or it will unlock it depends on the application for instance if a fire safety system uh, is activated the lock itself if there's an automatic lock it will unlock in the case of a fire so anyone can just open any door and just get out but for instance in a prison you may want to have the locks actually lock if the power goes out all the doors will lock but we have to include more fail-safe design. In this situation, we can't just have all the doors locked because there could be someone in there like a guard that needs to get around still in the jail and open and close doors. So there's going to be some kind of mechanical mechanism that can override the automatic locking system. We always have to think about what is going to happen if it fails, not only if it fails, but when it fails, we have to design for when things fail and we have to design it safe. So this is an example here where in this situation, if the power goes out, if the pneumatic system dies, uh, then we have other options that we can look at for dealing with pneumatic systems. And we'll talk about that in lecture in a week 13, no, in week 12. But for now, let's just say the electricity dies. If the power goes out, I want this lock to unlock. Well, if we take a look at this mechanism here, this lock here, it's going to extend 
to make this unlock. So I want to put a cylinder in here with a spring on it so that if if I lose electricity, this solenoid is going to de-energize, this spring is going to take over, and essentially any air that's in here is going to vent out, and this will extend because it's got a spring in it. In this situation, we have a double acting cylinder, and in this case, we've got a spring that if this thing dies, if the power here dies, this spring is going to extend the cylinder. So in this case, this lock will unlock if the electricity goes out. In this case, we may have a situation like in a prison where you want to lock that. You want to lock it if the power goes out. So in this situation, if the power goes out, what's going to happen is that this is going to retract. So when this retracts, it locks. You can see this. When it retracts, it locks. Okay, good. So what's going to happen here is that when the power goes out, it will lock. And in this situation, if the power goes out, this spring will take over and it will retract the cylinder, which will lock the lock. So again, fail safe. This is what you have been challenged in the lab to actually put in fail safe. So what you need to do is you can see that both of these DCVs are single solenoid DCVs. So if you're gonna add fail safe in, you have to change the locking mechanism to a fail safe DCV that has a spring in it. Yeah, so, um, and you've gotta do that. And then you've gotta think about the logic of how, actually, of how to actually make that happen. So if the system fails, the lock is going to lock. Okay, good. So let's continue with a couple more slides here. This is a pretty cool one. And this is very, I mean, this is huge. This is all over transportation. This is in trains. This is in uh, cranes. Anything that moves on the road and or on the rail has got, pardon me, anything that is large and heavy, anything over five tons that is driving on the road and or on rail is going to have what is called air brakes. And what happens with the air brakes is that if the system, if if the vehicle's not running, if it's not running, what's happening is that the brakes actually engage. And that's because although there is a pressure tank that holds pressurized air, but that's because what's going on is there's a spring. And pressurized air pushes up against the spring to unlock the brakes. When the pressurized air is not present, the spring activates the locking mechanism and it locks the brakes. Yeah, so what's going on here is if there is no pressurized air in a vehicle, if it fails, the brakes will engage. It'll stop. Essentially, if there's no pressure in, you can't even disengage the pressure. You can't even disengage the brakes without pressurized air. So another pneumatic system that is a fail-safe device where if the pneumatic air is lost, the brakes will engage. The way that you release the brakes is when you actually, when you, well, let's think about this. When you press the button to apply the brakes, it actually releases air out of this area here with a diaphragm in it, and it allows the spring to do its work and lock up the brakes. Yeah, so when you apply the brakes, it actually lets air out of here so that it goes into its natural state which is a locked break. Pretty cool, eh? So one more example here, and then I'll let you go. This is pretty cool. This is kind of like more of an actual mechanism that has a fail-safe to it. It doesn't have actuators or anything like that. What's going on is that there's this cable that pulls these things up, and these are signals for trains. There's a cable that pulls these. So what's going to happen is if you want a train to stop, an actuator pulls a cable. It goes horizontal. Now, if the train says, okay, you can go, it's okay, you can go, this goes on to a 45 degree angle. So to proceed is a 45 degree angle. But the thing is, if this cable breaks, this thing falls straight down to the ground and it goes up and down and that indicates a failure. So the train will then stop because he knows he can't go forward because he knows that this signal is not telling him the truth. It's not telling him either to proceed or to stop. Again, if it's in this state, the train stops. On a 45, it says go. Those are the only two options. But if it breaks, it will fall down. And that will indicate to the driver of the train that that is failed. And he doesn't know whether he should proceed or stop. There you go. So a little bit about fail-safe design. 
really important when you're you know designing your stuff i mean you know as people working in the engineering field and as technologists and technicians we're designing stuff that people interact with and you know what all stuff will eventually fail you better design your system so that when it does fail it fails in a manner that's not going to hurt anybody and or is not going to do like a large amount of damage to whatever system so good luck with the challenge of the lab to add fail safe into the locking device all you really have to do is switch the two cylinders. Yeah, switch the actual locking cylinder from a double acting DCV to a single DCV that has a spring on it. If you want, you can change the cylinder to a spring DCV. I don't think you need to do that. I think it's just a matter of switching those two cylinders, switching the DCVs on the cylinders uh, to be able to have the locking mechanism has a single DCV with a spring return on it. And then you have to change the logic a little bit. But there you go. So uh, good luck with that. And you know a little bit about fail safe. And keep that in mind. Okay, bye.